Hey guys, how's it going? This is Fixer Med. Welcome back to my High Yield Anatomy Review Series for the USMLE Step 1 NBME CBSE and NBME CAS examinations. This will be part 3 of a general overview of the discipline of anatomy for these examinations. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on today's content. Today I want to open up with a discussion on rotator cuff muscles. Rotator cuff muscles, collectively known as sits, contribute to the support of the shoulder joint by enveloping it in a musculotendinous rotator cuff. This reinforcement is present on all sides, with the exception of the inferior aspect where dislocation is more susceptible. The specific rotator cuff muscles include supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis, and I have a good diagram illustrating the location of these muscles in relation to one another on the upper extremity. So hope that helps you guys out. We're gonna be discussing these in more detail in the high yield and MSK review series. So keep an eye out for that one. Hopefully I can get to making it soon. All right, let's go ahead and talk about abduction of the upper limb. Abduction of the upper limb involves distinct stages. From zero to 15 degrees, the initiation of upper extremity abduction is driven by the supraspinatus muscle activated by the suprascapular nerve between 15 degrees and 110 degrees. Further abduction to the horizontal position relies on the deltoid muscle, which is governed by the axillary nerve, in the range of 110 degrees to 180 degrees, elevating the extremity beyond the horizontal position necessitates scapular rotation, achieved through the coordinated action of the trapezius, innervated by the accessory nerve, cranial nerve 11, and serratus anterior, activated by the long thoracic nerve. Moving on, next we're going to be talking about subacromial bursitis. Subacromial bursitis is characterized by inflammation of the subacromial bursa, frequently arises from calcific supraspinatus tendonitis. This condition leads to a painful arc during abduction. There's a nice cartoon graphic of subacromial bursitis on the upper right, and there's a MRI image of subacromial bursitis on the lower right. So hope that helps you guys out. Let's go ahead and get started on some questions. We have a 32 year old individual that experiences difficulty raising their arm. Which nerve is primarily responsible for initiating the upper extremity abduction from zero to 15 degrees? Pretty first order question, so take your time. We'll be moving on in a few seconds. Moving on now, if you need more time, Go ahead and pause the video. Moving on. The initiation of upper extremity abduction in the range of 0 to 15 degrees is driven by the supraspinatus muscle, which is activated by a suprascapular nerve. Therefore, the correct answer is B, suprascapular nerve. Let's go ahead and see why the other answer choices are incorrect. Axillary nerve. The axillary nerve is responsible for further abduction between 15 degrees and 110 degrees, not the initial stages of abduction. Long thoracic nerve. The long thoracic nerve activates the serratus anterior muscle contributing to scapular rotation in the range of 110 degrees to 180 degrees. Now in the initiation of abduction. Axillary nerve. Accessory nerve. Sorry about that. Cranial nerve 11. The accessory nerve innervates the trapezius muscle, which contributes to scapular rotation in the range of 110 degrees to 180 degrees. Now in the initial stages of abduction. Radial nerve. The radial nerve is not directly involved in the initiation of upper extremity abduction, but is associated with functions such as wrist and finger extension. Moving on to the next question. We have a 56-year-old woman that undergoes a left mastectomy. Several weeks post-surgery, she reports a difficulty touching her left hand to her right shoulder, which of the following is most likely the reason for this limitation. Right. I think I gave you guys enough time. If you guys need more time, pause the video. If not, moving on. Moving on now. The patient's difficulty in touching her left hand to her right shoulder suggests impairment of abduction, a function primarily governed by the deltoid muscle. The axillary nerve innervates the deltoid muscle, and damage to this nerve can result in weakness or paralysis of shoulder abduction. 
Given the surgical context of the mastectomy, it is possible that the axillary nerve was affected during the procedure. Therefore, the correct answer is C, axillary nerve injury. Let's go ahead and review why the other answer choices are incorrect. Radial nerve injury. Radial nerve injury typically leads to weakness in wrist and finger extension, not shoulder abduction. Ulnar nerve injury. Ulnar nerve injury primarily affects hand, intri hand intrinsic muscles and does not result in significant weakness in shoulder abduction. Musculocutaneous nerve injury. Musculocutaneous nerve primarily innervates the biceps brachii muscle and its injury would not explain the difficulty in shoulder abduction. Median nerve injury. Median nerve injury is associated with weakness in forearm pronation and finger flexion, but not with shoulder abduction limitations. Let's move on to the next question. We have a 45-year-old patient that complains of shoulder pain and reports a painful arc during abduction. Imaging reveals calcific supraspinatus tendonitis. Which of the following nerve injuries is most likely associated with this condition? I'm going to give you guys a small hint. Remember the MRI picture? All right, I think I gave you guys enough time. If you need more time, please feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, moving on. Moving on now. Calcific supraspinatus tendonitis can lead to subacromial bursitis, causing a painful arc during abduction. The axillary nerve innervates the deltoid muscle, which is crucial for shoulder abduction. Inflammation and pain in the subacromial bursa can impair the function of the axillary nerve, resulting in weakness or paralysis of the deltoid muscle and contributing to the reported painful arc during abduction. Therefore, the correct answer is C, axillary nerve. Let's go ahead and see why the other answer choices are incorrect. Radial nerve. Radial nerve injury is not commonly associated with calcific supraspinatus tendonitis and painful arc during abduction. Ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve involvement is unlikely to cause a specific painful arc during abduction seen in calcific supraspinatus tendonitis. Musculocutaneous nerve. Musculocutaneous nerve primarily innervates the bicep brachii muscle and is not associated with deltoid muscle function and shoulder abduction. Median nerve. Median nerve injury is not related to the painful arc during abduction characteristic of calcific supraspinatus tendonitis and subacromial bursitis. Now guys, I, that does it for today's video. So as always, remember this is a general overview of anatomy. I'm not going to be as comprehensive as MSK. This is just like a good high yield, high points strategy to get as much points as you can on like a CBSE or a step one exam. The MSK review series, I'll probably start working on that after I'm done with the disciplines. Right now I'm working quite hard on biochemistry. There's a lot of material on biochemistry. So I hope to have biochemistry done by the end of the week of, at the time of posting this video. Uh, and then I'm going to probably start genetics, immunology, general pathology, then general pharmacology and then we move on to organ blocks. So that's gonna be fun. And as always guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If not, this is Fixer Med signing off. Please be sure to have a great day and good luck studying everyone. Goodbye.